In this question, it's mainly about uncertainty. Now we're told that we have a stone and it falls in a well. That's why I like this, well, well, well. <laughs> so it falls in a well and the distance of, you know, the depth, sorry, of the well is 20 meters. We're told that it falls with this right here equation. If you recognize this, this is one of your equations of motion, right? This is displacement equals a half a t squared. Um, we're told that the time itself is uh, the time it takes for it to fall down that well is two seconds plus or minus 0.2. And we're asking for the absolute uncertainty on D. Now we're told that the uncertainty on A is negligible. Okay, that's something actually that's important. If they tell you something is negligible, uh, first of all, uncertainty on A, what does that represent? That's delta A. And you can say that that equals essentially zero. It's negligible, there's none. So how do we actually find uncertainty? you have to recognize this equation and what you do with things. Remember from your formula booklet, we have an equation that goes like this, right? If y equals a, b over c, something like that, then we know that delta y over y equals, so this you have two things multiplied or divided. In this case, they're multiplied and divided. It's just the fractional uncertainties. That's what this delta a over a is, plus delta b over b, plus delta c over c. That's it in general. So in our own equation, let's maybe apply that to our own equation. We have D, right? So if we wanted to do the uncertainty, we would treat it the same way. We'd say delta D over D. Technically, I mean, if you really want to be you know, strict about it, you could say it's delta 1 half over 1 half. You'll see that's ridiculous in a second. Plus delta A over A plus, now remember that T squared is the same thing as saying T times T. So every one of these terms are here that you have, you have to add a new fractional uncertainty. So we have delta t over t plus another delta t over t. Now let's look at what makes sense. There's no uncertainty on delta 1 half. So that goes away. Maybe I'll put it in another color, like green. They told us that delta a was essentially 0, so that makes it easier. Um, and can you see then, if you want to get delta d, let's see, so we've got delta d over d equals, in this case, 2 delta t over t, because we're adding them twice. Now, if we look at this, we want the absolute uncertainty. What does that mean? That means we just want delta d by itself. So delta d equals, we put this d up top here, so it's 2 delta t over t times d. Let's put in all those numbers. So 2 times the uncertainty on the time, which is 0.2. Uh, divide that by the actual time, which is 2. Um, all that times the distance, which is 20. If you look at this, then you can do a couple of things. You can say, well, 2 divided by 2, that cancels out. You have 0.2 times 20. Uh, and what's that going to be? 0.2 times 20, that's going to be, um, what's that? 4. Yeah, 4. So we're going to have 4, and what were the units? I think they are meters. So we'd say 4 meters. And so that's why the answer was uh, D. So D was the choice right there because that was plus or minus four meters. So that's why the answer was D. I personally think this is a lot of work to expect someone to do on a paper one because you're only given a minute to a minute and a half for the questions. But as you know, there's a lot of these kinds of questions, ones that take a while to do. Um, this is if you want to do it directly like this, right? If you want to actually calculate everything. Sometimes you can actually look at the different choices and sort of cancel them out. But in this case, you can say that D is uh, plus or minus 4 meters because that was the absolute uncertainty.